Welcome to Trademark Insiders, the business and marketing podcast brought to you by Koga and Cannon. We are Mary Koga Lowell and Mary Cannon, national trademark attorneys, brand consultants, and business coaches. Join us to get the insider's perspective on all things business, marketing, and intellectual property. Today, we have front row seats to the billionaire cage fight that has the whole world tweeting and threading. Picture this. In one corner, we have Elon Musk, best known for owning companies like Tesla, Twitter, and SpaceX. In the other corner, we have Mark Zuckerberg, the hoodie rocking social media mogul over at Meta Platforms, which is home to Instagram, Facebook, and a new Twitter rival called Threads that is really taking off. Apparently, Elon took notice of Thread's overnight success and fired off a cease and desist letter to Zuckerberg, threatening to sue. The gloves are off, people. So is Thread's just a Twitter copycat? And did Meta really play dirty by snatching up laid-off Twitter employees? All of this started with a joke when Elon Musk publicly challenged Mark Zuckerberg to a cage fight, which Zuckerberg accepted. But with attorneys now involved, things are starting to get real. So MK, I am loving the new Threads app. What do you think of it? Well, I like it too. Um, I got to admit, I, you know, I jumped right in as did many other people. And so far I've enjoyed it quite a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. It's been easy because if you have a, an Instagram account, you know, it's really, really easy to get a Threads account. So, so far so good. We'll see what's, what happens, but so far I've been pleased. What about you? I agree with you that the app is easy to use, very intuitive. Um, The engagement seems good so far, and I'm enjoying it. Actually, one funny thread I saw said something along the lines of, I didn't expect to be rooting for Mark Zuckerberg uh, in 2023, but here we are. I think that sums it up um, with this whole conflict with Elon Musk. We are now kind of choosing sides. And I actually saw that Mark Zuckerberg has trained as a fighter and appears to be in excellent shape. So Elon, better look out. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, it, you know, it was also amusing to see that Elon Musk, Musk's jet account alive and well, because uh, we had heard about that previously when Musk booted it off Twitter. So this account shares the comings and goings of Musk's private jet by sharing publicly available flight information. And now that it's on threads, it's out there. I know. I'm proud to say I was one of the first couple hundred followers of Elon Musk's jet. And I checked it this afternoon and it has hundreds of thousands of followers checking on Elon Musk's location. And as we all have heard, threads has already surpassed Uh, I think 110 million signups in the past five days with the consensus being that threads is offering a town square atmosphere similar to Twitter, but minus the reputation for extremism and conspiracy theories. Right. Um, It's worth noting that a brand's exodus has taken place over at Twitter for this reason. Basically, a lot of companies don't want to pay for advertising on a con- controversial, divisive platform because of the implications for their own reputation. And, and so Threads has decided to push lifestyle topics like fashion or sports instead of news and politics. Not only is this less likely to promote controversy or divisiveness, it also appeals to a broader, bigger audience. So So far, they're doing well. Yes, there is the question, though, will Meta become less relevant overall in terms of offering meaningful topics and discussions if they focus on these lighter topics? On the other hand, commercially, it's probably a very good idea because we have seen a 59% reduction in advertising on Twitter since Elon took over, and um, that's quite a substantial change. And... On that note, Elon Musk has been sharing several alt-right tweets lately. Uh, He also just filed a $90 million lawsuit against the law firm that represented Twitter in the purchase of the company. Um, It's all coming across a little bit immature and erratic. So while Zuckerberg is no saint, Musk is kind of making him look good in comparison. 
Um, Musk has his defenders, though. Well, Musk does have his defenders. And uh, by the way, you know, Twitter does seem to have at least one big name backer, the Taliban. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and there have been reports that, the, yeah, the Taliban reportedly has had a long presence on on Twitter, even before Musk bought the company. And, and notably, the Taliban is banned from platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and now Threads. So, you know, to me, you know, that's, that's pretty significant. Um, it, there was a report in the news um, that a Taliban spokesman said something about uh, Threads, and he said Musk has nothing to worry about because he was quoted as saying other platforms can't replace Twitter, citing its freedom of speech and its public nature and credibility. And he said that Twitter doesn't have an intolerant policy like Meta. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But for me, um, I think banning, you know, as my personal opinion is banning the Taliban is a good thing. So to me, that's a strike against Twitter. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, some of Musk's defenders say maybe Musk is the only person standing in the way of a Zuckerberg social media monopoly. Um, another thing is... Meta has this reputation for copycat products. So Threads is kind of an obvious copycat of Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's a text-based chat app. Similar examples from Meta would be products like Reels, which was clearly inspired by TikTok, and Stories, which were inspired by Snapchat. Yeah, I think those are all valid points. And so I think there are, you know, there are valid criticisms on, on both sides to be honest with you. And um, another concern that I've heard uh, would be privacy issues. I heard some people talking about threads and they said, well, we're not going to sign up for threads for the same reason we no longer have anything on Facebook. We want nothing to do with Facebook because Meta has way too much of our personal information and who knows what they're doing with it. And I, I think that's a valid concern, but it was notably the people who I'm referring to who were having this conversation are very active on TikTok. And, you know, to me, if you're, if you're active on TikTok, shouldn't you, and you're very, and you're worried about privacy concerns, well, isn't, don't we have privacy concerns there? So the whole privacy issue is is a big, big question, um, and we don't have any, you know, nobody has any easy issues for that, but it, it just seems clear Threads is really taking off. Yeah, and as this cage fight news began to fizzle out, Elon Musk has now thrown the first punch legally by accusing Zuckerberg and Meta platforms of some seriously unlawful shenanigans. The cease and desist letter claims that Meta engaged in systemic, willful and unlawful misappropriation of Twitter's trade secrets and other intellectual property. Right, right. And according to X Corp, Meta won on a hiring spree. They say in the cease and desist letter, basically, that Meta snatched up former Twitter employees who had Twitter trade secrets in order to, to build out threads. Um, so that's going to be a big part of this of this particular dispute is is um, whether um, trade secrets have been misappropriated. It was it's really interesting um, because you know, I thought that was an interesting point when um, when X Corp brought up hiring former Twitter employees because we all heard when Elon Musk took over at Twitter. A large percentage of employees, Twitter employees, found themselves without a job. So, are these are those lay, layoffs now coming back to bite him? It certainly looks that way. Yes, and on top of that, Twitter is currently defending a handful of lawsuits from former employees, like the ones you mentioned, who claim they did not receive the severance pay that they are owed on their way out, and in fact. One employee just sued for $500 million in federal court. So could these disgruntled ex-employees be sharing trade secrets as a way to get back at Elon Musk and Twitter? Hard to say, um, but it, it obviously Twitter's got a lot to contend with on the legal front. But, you know, we mentioned trade secrets in this particular cease and desist letter. So let's take a moment to demystify the concept of tra trade secrets. We like to think of them as a company's secret recipe for success. 
Trade secrets are the kind of valuable and even more importantly, confidential information that gives a company a competitive edge over its rivals. So that's what Twitter is, or Twitter is alleging here. They're saying that confidential Twitter information was used via the former Twitter employees in order to create threats. Now, um, we've talked in other episodes, you know, we've talked about how trademark trademarks can be registered with the government for protection. Trade secrets are different. Yes. You don't go, there's no way to register a trade secret. However, um, there are other ways to protect them. And in fact, companies, if they want to guard their trade secrets, they must take um, other steps to protect them, such as implementing tight security measures and securing non-disclosure agreements. But did the Twitter employees sign such agreements before departing? We don't have that information yet, uh, but Musk's lawyer did allege in the cease and desist letter that these employees, quote, owe ongoing obligations to Twitter and may have, quote, improperly retained Twitter documents and electronic devices, which potentially suggests some kind of wrongdoing there. So now Musk team is demanding that Meta immediately cease using any Twitter trade secrets or highly confidential information, which are all typical demands that we would expect to see in your run of the mill cease and desist letter. But if that wasn't enough, X Corp is also making it clear that Meta is prohibited from engaging in any crawling or scraping of Twitter's followers or data. However, it's not really clear that Meta has done anything along those lines, as this directive was given without any kind of context, much less evidence. Right. So all of this adds up to infringement on Twitter's intellectual property. But what does that mean in exactly and what are some possible um, legal ramifications? In this case, we're primarily looking at an alleged misappropriation of trade secrets, which is just one form of intellectual property infringement. Um, And this typically involves the unauthorized acquisition, use, or disclosure of valuable and confidential business information. And protecting trade secrets like these is obviously critical to maintaining a competitive edge, wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Misappropriation of trade secrets is a serious infringement on intellectual property rights because it can cause a lot of harm to another company by exploiting the company's valuable and confidential business information. So at this point, Elon has not actually filed suit against Meta, but he is warning that he might just do that with the cease and desist letter. So what if X Corp moves forward with a lawsuit and is able to prove that Meta stole trade secrets? I think if that, you know, if if that's what they're going, if that's what their theory is going to be, I think we can expect or um, X Corp may seek injunctive relief to halt Meta's allegedly unlawful use of um, X Corp trade secrets. Um, and would probably also be seeking money, monetary damages and other appropriate remedies. Yes. So protecting those trade secrets through proper security measures, NDAs, and internal policies is absolutely crucial to maintaining a competitive edge. Yeah, when it comes down to it, all companies should be protecting their intellectual property and being very careful not to infringe on the rights of other companies, too. Exactly. Exactly. Now, we're not saying that Meta has infringed on Twitter's intellectual property rights. That remains to be seen. However, I think just looking at the cease and desist letter, I think it shows it really how valuable a company's intellectual property is and oftentimes will be um, a company's among a company's most valuable as- assets. So sticking to ethical conduct and respecting your competitor's rights certainly can help avoid allegations of infringement and safeguard a company's long-term business interests. Or as I would like to say, Tweet others the way you wish to be tweeted. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Trademark Insiders podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Remember, trademarks are an essential part of building and protecting your brand. 
And our goal is to provide you with the knowledge and insights you need to succeed. Visit us at trademarkinsiders.com for more information. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay up to date on the latest trends, news, and strategies in the world of trademarks. Protect your brand, protect your business, and join us next time for more insider tips and tricks on Trademark Insiders.